Are we alone in this universe? This existential question might have come up in probably everyone's mind. Taking in mind the vastness of our universe and the large amount of star systems present in it, we might not be alone. And if that's the case, what if an alien civilization that is millions of years ahead of us in technological advancement has already found us? What if these aliens are lurking in our solar system? What if we are being imaged and watched by them constantly? Is it possible that there are alien lurkers in our solar system? In this video, we will talk about whether an alien civilization could possibly be watching us or not. In 1950, a scientist named Enrico Fermi asked the question, where is everybody? The question went on to become one of the most famous paradoxes in history, also known as the Fermi Paradox. Our universe has billions and billions of stars, and those stars have trillions and trillions of planets. Considering the vast amount of planets present in our universe, chances of finding life are quite high. So if that's the case, shouldn't the universe be teeming with spaceships? Where is everybody? This is the Fermi Paradox, and no one has a real answer to it. All we have are possible theories, and among them is one such theory that states that advanced aliens are lurking in our solar system and observing us. Could aliens be photographing us right now, watching us go about our day, quietly monitoring our behavior? This might send a chill up your spine, and make you wonder about the science behind this theory. Can this really be possible? Can anyone really observe us without us noticing them? In order to watch us, the aliens would need the technology to image long distances of space. The basic challenge of imaging other star systems is the distance that exists between them. Even the closest stars to us are so far away that they appear as mere specks of light. Today, in modern astronomy, we have devised various techniques to spot and discover planets orbiting around other star systems. Until today, about 5,000 exoplanets have been discovered by various techniques used by us. This photo of the young star system PDS-70 is a state-of-the-art image taken by the ALMA Observatory last year. Despite this technical achievement here, the spatial resolution of the Jupiter class in this image is very limited, and anything smaller than that cannot be resolved by us today. This is why the Jupiter-type planet also appears as only a smudge. Even if the image of the planet is resolved by a scale of 1000, we would still only have a 1 by 1 pixel image at the very best. So, you can only imagine what kind of resolution would be required to image and observe a small planet like Earth. On top of that, the ALMA Observatory was able to detect this planet only because it formed very recently and is very hot and luminous emitting the light we see. Our Earth is not only very small, but also very faint as compared to this planet in PDS-70. To combat these two problems of resolution and faintness, the only typical solution is to build a very big telescope. Fortunately, in 2010, Jean Schneider and his colleagues calculated the extreme limits of our technology, stating that to take a 10 by 10 visible light image of a supersized Earth that's just 16 light years ahead, we would need a 70 kilometer wide telescope. Now, we don't necessarily need a single telescope with a diameter of 70 kilometers. We could use a technique called interferometry, which uses a number of telescopes to receive light spread over a region of 70 kilometers. This idea was taken to the extreme by the Event Horizon EHT, which used telescopes across the Earth to famously image the black hole in Messier 87, the first ever image of a black hole. But even using the entire Earth as a visible light interferometer would still not be sufficient to resolve exoplanets so that we could see the inhabitants of the planet. This would be the ultimate goal of observation of exoplanets. Imagine a video of a distant exoplanet so detailed that you can easily see the alien flora and fauna on the planet. We can watch the sentient beings on the planet go about their day. The insights possible from such a video can be truly amazing. Schneider calculated that to have this level of detail, you would need a telescope with a diameter of the sun. But that would only solve the problem of resolution. We also need photons of those distant exoplanets. So even with such a big telescope, it would be nearly impossible to image the inhabitants of those planets, as they would be so faint that their photons wouldn't even reach us. We took the time to explain this to you, because to observe us from a distance the aliens would need this technology, and even that wouldn't be sufficient. So what other option is left on the table? 
If you're here watching this video, it means you are passionately curious about human spaceflight and the mysteries of the universe. We constantly strive to make videos that excite a curious person like you. So subscribe now and press the bell notification so you never miss out on the updates about the cosmos. Back to our possibility of lurkers. The Hubble Space Telescope has been one of the most important telescopes for mankind, providing thrilling images of the universe. With a diameter of 2.4 meters, Hubble cruises above the Earth at 540 kilometers, which is 75 billion times closer than the closest star, Proxima Centauri. But if we turn around the Hubble telescope to look at the people on Earth, the spatial resolution provided by Hubble would be plenty enough to see people go about their day. This means that it is possible to observe inhabitants of a planet from space. It's just that you would have to possibly go to that star system. This brings us to the title of this video. What if they are lurking in our solar system itself? Mission concepts like the Breakthrough Starshot aim to go to a distant planet and make observations, keeping in mind the limit of our telescopes. This will be the ultimate goal of observations. Given that we are curious about doing this, what if an advanced alien civilization is already doing this to us? First suggested in 1960 by Ronald Bracewell, the idea suggests that we should look for probes inside our solar system rather than listening for radio signals from distant stars. These are called Bracewell probes, and they might be observing Earth for millions of years in case intelligent life evolves. The Earth has been presenting a clear oxygen biosignature for about 2 billion years now. These Bracewell probes can even use the sun to harness their energy and send back information about us to their home planet. As sci-fi as this idea sounds, let's openly explore the science behind this. So the tools that we use today to look for signals from distant stars can easily be repurposed to look for these probes and signatures in our solar system. And imagine if we are able to eavesdrop on the transmission being made by these lurking probes. These transmissions might have a layer of encryption, but the fact that they were not made for us would be thrilling. We cannot help but wonder what the transmission says, what compression algorithm it uses. All of these things would be completely alien to us, their language and the mathematics they use. Unless the aliens purposely want us to decipher these messages and provide us simple data forms, they need not to be concerned about their privacy and encryption, as all the information would be completely alien to us. The mere presence of such a probe in our own backyard would be immense, and something which we could possibly salvage and reverse engineer. But where will this probe be present in our solar system to silently and easily observe us? At what place should we look for them? Let's talk about the science behind that. If this probe intends to take clear high-resolution images of the Earth, it needs to be as close to the Earth as possible. Low Earth orbit, or LEO, is the perfect place for that, but this is already intensely monitored by humans. The US Space Surveillance catalogues over 34,000 orbiting objects in orbit around the Earth. With sizes as small as 10 centimeters, a probe smaller than that would be unable to observe human behavior on Earth. So this possibility is out of the question. The presence of a low Earth orbit lurker will be challenged by our extensive monitoring of the region. The next place we might look is our moon. A probe on the moon would have perfectly stable gravity and will be undisturbed by atmospheric erosion, weathering, or any geological activity. However, like low Earth orbit, Almost every part of our moon has been extensively photographed by orbiters over the last few decades. The Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter imaged the moon's surface at a spatial resolution of 100 meters. So if there was a 100 meter sized alien telescope on the lunar surface, we would have spotted it by now, or it is very small. In order to image the Earth's surface to observe its inhabitants, it would need much more than that. So if the moon is out of the question, what's left? Co-orbital asteroids and quasi-satellites might be our next best hope. Cruenia is a particularly interesting possibility. It's a two-kilometer sized co-orbital asteroid that follows a horseshoe orbit that takes it as near to Earth as 12 million kilometers once every 770 years. Even if the full two kilometers of this asteroid were some kind of enormous extraterrestrial telescope monitoring the world, it would still be restricted to a spatial resolution of no more than 4 meters of the Earth's surface. And this would only happen at these rare and occasional periods of closest approach. And this really isn't sufficient. However, Cruenia is just one of the several other co-orbitals. What if these various different asteroids form an interferometric network 
These co-orbital objects are considered to remain stable over thousands of years, but not millions, and they move in unpredictable, nearly chaotic orbits with regard to one another, making interferometry a nightmare. Extraterrestrial lurkers hidden amid these co-orbitals are not an obvious option. With numerous significant difficulties with Earth orbits and co-orbitals being unstable, it's possible that the lurkers would pick a more distant vantage point where the Earth's gravity will not destabilize their probe. But that would require a truly enormous space probe. For example, to visually photograph the Earth at one meter resolution from a vantage point near Saturn's distance, a telescope roughly the size of the Moon would be required. Of course, aliens could use the interferometric approach, but now the vast survey region would have to scour and the sheer faintness of these probes would make them presently unobservable. Put together, the case that there is an unknown alien lurker imaging the Earth at high resolution and visible wavelengths is quite unlikely. But anything can happen. So what do you think about the possibility of aliens watching us? Would they care to make such an over-engineered system just to observe us? Let us know what you think in the comment section below. There will be more updates coming about these extraterrestrial beings from both SETI and METI. So make sure you subscribe to the channel and don't miss out on all the interesting updates about astronomy and spaceflight.